just about made it. Two trains, a plane. I nearly got the boat, but I got the plane instead, and I came in like Shh. And here I am to celebrate on the Aran Islands, Tim Pat Coogan's great birthday bash. So I brought a little drop of smoked salmon and a little bit of brown bread, which I produced this morning in the bakery. That's the real, that's the way to a man's heart. So let's hope we celebrate tonight and remember his 18th birthday. Here, here, to Tim Pat Coogan. Uh, what an amazing experience to ride down to Aaron with Tim uh, to the lodge where um, we were you know shown our quarters and uh, I was just absolutely bamboozled by the island itself and um, you know how well Tim was known down there but he made us feel so so welcome as young men down there you know uh, sessions from 10 in the morning to 11 at night in the pub uh, Tim would rustle up a bit of food uh, invariably he'd go down the pier and get bags of prawns or he'd go to Alvin and Michael and get some fresh veg um, or indeed you know at a certain point we had guns we to we, we would uh, shoot out the bedroom window and kill a rabbit and Tim would cook it for dinner but um, you know Tim showed us great I suppose um, freedom on Aaron he really you know as young men he let us roam, roam freely around the place and you know didn't judge us if we were drunk or if we were messing or anything else but um, what a great guy, what a, what a great island, what great people. Um, Tim is a great friend to all of us, a great friend to the Wrecking Crew. All his family have been so hospitable over the years. And I suppose I'd like to wish Tim like, a very, very happy 80th birthday. And um, to thank all his family, uh, both on the mainland and Aaron, for their hospitality over the years. <laughs> Uh, I remember very well on one occasion, quite a few years ago now, when uh, uh, Tim, myself, a uh, few other friends, we'd had a very, very busy day in hot sunshine, going from cava to cava, checking out different wines and whatnot, and around about six in the afternoon we were getting fairly tired and we went, we found a beach and we, uh, uh, we decided we'd have a swim. Uh, of course. We had no swimming trunks, we had no towels, we had nothing but uh, these five guys, and you can just imagine it on this beautiful beach, uh, sun coming down in the distance, and uh, they all whipped off all the kit, uh, all ran, five naked guys, straight into the sea, white skinned, probably freckles, mostly bald, and uh, all dived in, a great, great swim, came out. Um, no towels to dry ourselves, uh, ran up and down the beach a little bit. At that stage we'd frightened off anybody who was still on the beach and uh, got the clothes back on, uh, back into the car and we headed off to the next cava. An absolutely wonderful afternoon, we had a great time. That's one of my happiest memories of Tim Pat. I've often said, in fact, I've said it to Tim Pat as well, that he's renowned and well known as a Republican. I think he's actually a civil rights person. I don't think he is somebody who is, if you like, um, of one view only. I think he's a champion of all people, uh, regardless of their creed or background, which is one of the things I love about him.
Yeah, I, I remember we were in Greece one time and, and uh, Tim Pat just went straight in for a swim. We were having a little a glass of wine and uh, he was missing. So we eventually got binoculars and we sought him out. He was about a mile away, still plodding away with the flippers. God bless. One of my earliest memories of Tim Pat was when I was very young. I was in an orphanage and uh, Tim Pat and Trolley, they invited me to their home for Christmas dinner. But unfortunately, she, she was pregnant with Tom, her only son, and she had to go to the hospital to have a baby and left Tim Pat at home to look after everybody. And I woke up on Christmas morning and Tim was in the kitchen preparing the dinner, which he made a great job of. But I was absolutely shocked because I asked him, are you not going to Mass? And he said, no, 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 no. I was absolutely shocked. I couldn't believe it. But he was always an independent-minded person, you know. And I think from that, I began to question a lot of things, thanks to him. Well, happy birthday to Dad, obviously, but it's just so good to be in Aaron and great to be in Norman's house and here with Rachel and have the rest of the siblings here and uh, missing things in Aaron like Clara and our mum and Jessie and Quiva and Faye and yeah. Ruby yeah. Um, and all Bibi and Ma and everybody, the 90th birthdays all the celebrations we've had here in this house. Yeah, actually, Dad's mother, Phoebe, had her 90th birthday. She did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So many maids are much like Dad, but so good. It's like, who said, we'll have um, paid help like that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Here's the paid help. Oh, oh, yeah, here's the paid help. And Dad's birthday. Dad's birthday. One of my best memories here with Dad is um, out in a curragh out there in Killeney Bay. And it was before I went to boarding school. And we were out there and it was, we were out in the curragh and he was showing me this phosphorescence in the water at that time of the evening. And the next thing we came across this shoal of basking sharks. And he said to me, we're going over to touch one. And I nearly freaked. And he said, you'd be the only girl in Callan who'll ever have touched a basking shark. And I was! <laughs> Oh, 
another one. Like, Wait, give it a good pass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, here, I'll it. I'll it. It's a tongue. <laughs> I'm not making a thing. <laughs> it's inflatable. And? <laughs> Is there hair in it? Oh, oh my god. 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 Oh my Tim, like me, has a great passion for rugby and sport generally. And normally he's a very tolerant man and generous man, as he is. But I discovered that during rugby matches, we see a side of Tim Pat that you never see. Total intolerance. And I remember one day I was watching a match with a, a, another friend of his. And during the game, we started to talk. So Tim was in charge of the remote control. So he didn't say anything to us, but very gradually he pressed the button for the volume. And as we kept talking, the volume kept going up and up until eventually we got the message. And, and I think if there had been a sin bin in the room, I think he would have put us in it. Oh, my name is Poppy, and I'm Tim Pat Keegan's granddaughter. And we're in Aaron to celebrate his 80th birthday. I love Aaron because it's a magical, beautiful place. Aaron is one of the most prettiest places in the world and I love Aaron. My, grand, my granddad is Tim Pat Coogan and I love him. Happy birthday, granddad. So, if Aaron has taught me anything, I suppose that's a worthwhile lesson. It's worth you all knowing that. Or it's worth you all trying to implement it and teach your kids. And as I say, friendly, uh, friends and family and the people I've met in Aaron all make up the most important thread in my life. Um, sometimes when I've been waking up in the morning and wondering why I'm waking up in the morning, it's not so much a thread as a noose around my neck. <laughs> but my experiences in Aaron have been extremely happy and I think uh, fulfilling, meaningful. Mm. Two of my daughters, my beloved daughters, mm. have made very successful careers down here, rearing lovely families. And uh, the doings in Aaron are as avidly read about out in Zimbabwe, where my youngest daughter is, as they are in Dublin. So with modern communication, the fact you're in Ireland doesn't mean anything anymore. The world is shrinking. But what are not shrinking are the permanent values of Ireland, mm -hmm. our natural resources, friendliness and hospitality. And you have that in abundance. And thank you very much for it. I've been a beneficiary for longer than I like to think, well over a half century. So thank you all again. Really?